Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for consideration today is the gospel lesson which you had just previously heard read. And may it be a, li a light unto our feet, a light on our path. Because really as we look at this um, and uh, we look at these texts that are for today, it really is one that applies to our life very, very very, very well, because it really is about bondage and freedom and that type of thing. And, you know, we live in a country today where, where we talk about freedom and liberty as being things that are very important to us, is what this country was really founded upon. But yet, as we do that, we also have to ask ourselves, what truly is the meaning of freedom? What truly is the meaning of liberty? Because when it comes into it, we really don't really understand what it is. We think that we're free. We take a look at the things that, that, that we live and the way that we live our lives because we think that we're free because we can do whatever type of job we want. We can go and we can travel where we want within the world in that. But are we not still in a prison? Are we still not in bondage? And really that's what our gospel text really looks at and really helps us to understand is that the whole reason that Jesus Christ came here to this earth to go to the cross, to die, to give his life for us was to free us from bondage. <clears throat> you know, sometimes we kind of forget about that though. But you know, we, we uh, being here in the Cleveland area, we have a, a rather nice zoo to go and visit. And you know, when I go to the zoo... I like to go and I, I like to look at the animals. I especially like giraffes. If you've been in my office or if you go to my office at home and everything, you see statues of giraffes. I've got a couple of them that are on my bookshelves. I've got one that sits on my desk and it's there. And, and the reason I think I like giraffes is because I think it's the, it shows us that God has a sense of humor. Because as he was creating the animals, he, he took the giraffe and he said, what would happen if we did this? But I like to watch them, but you know, and it seems that when you go to the zoo, it seems like they're kind of free to roam around and eat grass and oh, how nice of a life it is. But yet, where is it that we view them from? Where is it that we, we stand outside of a gate and we watch them wander around? You know, the other thing that impresses me about the zoo is you kind of come in, you, you right there as you come in, the lion cage is, is just right over there. And you know, you go over and you see the lions and, and many times when you come in, you can hear his loud roar and how mighty and how, how strong this, this, this majestic creature that's there. But yet you go over and you go and you see him behind these bars. Sure, he looks like it's the life to live. And how many of us would like to just kind of lay around in the sun all day and have people throw meat at us? You know, I, I know that wouldn't be bad for me, you know. But here it is. But is he truly free? Is he truly to be the lion of what, what his roar kind of, uh, you know, symbolizes? Because if we really take a look at the lion, even though he's in captivity and he may feel free, he really isn't. <clears throat> Because what God intended for him to be is to be up and wander through the jungle, to be out and to hunt and to, and to run and to be, be like that. But yet I bet those lions don't think too much about it. They're just kind of lying around relaxing, getting meat thrown at them. But you know, isn't that kind of the way that it is for us? For those lions, the gates, the bars are invisible. But yet for us too... Aren't our bars a little bit invisible as well? Do we kind of go through life and think that we're free, but yet we're behind bars? After all, I can look out there and probably about half the congregation looks through these little things, pieces of glass all the time. And we don't think of that as being barred or, 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 or chained or, or, or behind bars, but yet it really is because it is a reminder of who we are. It's a reminder that sin, death, and this earthly flesh, and Satan himself tries to keep us in bondage, doesn't it? I mean, are you free? How many of us could take our glasses off today and throw them over the side and just run and do what they want? How many of us could pick up a menu in a restaurant without our glasses? How many of us can do that? You know, I can see pretty good like this, but I know that if I'm in a dark restaurant, I can't see it. I have to ask my wife for her glasses. And she gets mad at me for that. But yet, when we think about it, just those glasses in and of themselves, 
Those are signs and, and they remind us that in this world that we're kept captive. But there are so many other signs of us. How many are, are captive by the, the condition that our bodies are in today? How many of us can do that which we would want to do? How many of us truly are free to be able to, to run and jump and frolic like we were meant to do? Probably not a whole lot of us out there. There are a few young people, but even the young people. Even those youngsters that are out there, that are still the symbols of the bondage of, of this earthly flesh is around us. It's part of us. There are limitations to the body that we have. And we have to realize that it's not only in the physical, but it's also, it, it, it's also in a lot of the other ways of our life. We think that we live a free life out there, but how many things, how many times are, are we held captive by those, by those habits that we have? By those, uh, uh, by those cravings that we have, by the addictions that are in our life. And we all have those things, things that guide us and direct us, things that keep us and limit us from being the people we, we want to be, or, or even more than that, being the people that we are in Christ Jesus. You see, that's the thing about it is, is that this world wants to keep us in bondage. And the thing is, is that we have been in bondage so long because of it, that sometimes we lose sight of the bars. The bars become invisible, and we think that we have something that we really don't have. And that's what Jesus was telling them. And that's what Jesus came and said when he read the scroll of Isaiah. He says, this is the reason that I have come. And really, as we go into, as we go into the, the Lenten season and Easter, is that's really the purpose of Jesus coming to us. Is that for him to come and to release the prisoners. To make those who do not, do not have sight, to give them sight. And that's what his death and resurrection is about. Because really the change that we have is this earthly flesh. It's sin. It's those, it's those sinful desires that we have. Those are our chains. Those are what makes us a slave. In fact, that's what, that's what the scriptures tell us. That we are, bond, we, are, we are slaves to sin. We are in bondage. It keeps us from being the people who we should be. We know, we know when we talk about it and we can say it with all confidence that we are. Yes, we're children of God, but yet in that, how, what does Satan try to do? What does it do? It tries to keep us from being those children of God. And many times it's those, it's those things in our mind that, try to, that keep us, and it's those fears that are, that are there that keep us from being that children of God that God wants us to be. And so he sends his son, Jesus Christ, to go to the cross to suffer and to die in order that we would be freed from that and to be able to live the life that God intends us to do. A life that we're free not, not to be subject to, to, the, to, the, to this world and to sin, but one to be free to proclaim and to live in His glory. One to be free to be able to, 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 to worship Him. One to be free from even, even this, this stuff that's, that's all around here. You see, the reality of it is, is that all we have to do is look at ourselves. A perfect example of this is, is, is poor Charlie Hammer. You know, today, this week, we are going to be celebrating at his funeral. Because it's there that truly, he's, he today sees what it means to be freed from this world. Freed from the bondage of sin. You know, as he grew older, I, I, I heard tales of him being, you know, involved in the, in, in the youth and, and with the kids. And, and he, used to, he, he used to love to sing the songs. In fact, some of the songs we're going to sing are, are the one, or at least going to hear Trudy play on the organ, uh, are going to be songs that are simple songs like, Jesus loves me. And, and, and some of those songs, those type of songs. But yet those were the things that he loved to sing and he was able to do when he was younger, but as he got older and older, the body tried to, cap, you know, to make him captive even more. To where this guy that loved to be out in, the, out in nature and loved to, to move around and to, to do all of these things was then confined to a wheelchair.
But Satan didn't get the last laugh. This world didn't because the one thing he did is he trusted in his Lord. He trusted in a Savior. And it was in that day, just a couple of days ago, that the Lord came to him and said, Come on home. You're free. And today he's back to living. Living the life of what it truly means to be a child of God. He's seeing Christ face to face. He's there with the restored body, with the restored sense, with everything. And no longer do the shackles of this world and sin and all of that kind of stuff have it. He's now up there frolicking and doing all the things that he would do in Christ Jesus. Loving, loving those who have gone before him. Seeing his wife once again and being able to, to live a life that... That, that, is, that is in celebration of the Lord, being in His worship and His praise. You see, that's really what freedom is. Freedom is not being behind a cage, but freedom is being free to be able to express yourself in Jesus Christ, to live in the way in which He intends you to do. You know, this world, as, as we look at this gospel lesson, that's what they couldn't understand. You know, He went back to His hometown and he read the scripture and he said, today, you're seeing the fulfillment. I'm the one that's going to restore these things. And at first they were, they, they were a little excited about that because they, uh, you know, they were hearing these wonderful words come out of Jesus and, and all that. But then they got thinking about it there for a few minutes and they said, well, wait a minute. Isn't this Joseph's son? Wasn't he just a carpenter? How can all this happen? And then they started to get mad at him. Because they didn't see him in that light. They didn't see him as the one that could free them from the bondage of, of, of this life. And so then they got mad at him and wanted to throw him off a cliff. But isn't that the way that it is? You know, I know that I know a lot of you are born and, and, and live in Elyria all your life. But I know me being... being uh, being a, 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 not from this area and, and living in different areas, they kind of look at you differently. I know that when, I, when I've talked to you and I've told you that I'm really a shy guy. And most of you laugh about that because you see me as this outgoing pastor that's up here in, in Elyria, Ohio that, that, that can get up and can preach so eloquently and, and, and do all of those kind of things, Right? But I guarantee you, I go back home and, and I talk to the people back there. They remember the shy guy that sat in class and didn't even didn't speak and didn't even, one of his teachers didn't even know his name until the first quarter was over. Many people didn't see me. And see, that's the way that it is. Is that a lot of times people don't always see you in that standpoint. That I'm not this outgoing, dynamic guy. That I really am that really shy guy that was back in New Albany, Indiana. But see, that's the thing about it is, though, is that for a lot of us, don't we kind of do that to Jesus as well? After all, hasn't Jesus been in our life, for all of our lives for a lot of us? He's been in my life for 54 years, right? And so, yeah, we've got the nice picture of Jesus on the wall. And we have the cross that, some, that, you know, that I wear every once in a while. And probably some of you, you have the crosses that you wear when you get dressed up or maybe on Sunday morning. But how many times do we not listen to Jesus? How many times do we kind of take Him for granted? Oh, isn't He just that carpenter? Oh, isn't He just the one that's just in my life? You see, that's what we've got to do. And that's really what, what that's probably part of the, the bondage that we have here is that we don't see Jesus for who He is. He's just the hometown guy, right? We let some of the other idols out there get in our way. Whether it be sports or... Or, or, or work or whatever it is. And so we don't end up being where we should be and living the life that we intend to be. Living a life of service to one another. Living a life where we love one another. Living, living a life to where, to where we want to proclaim His message and to be in His worship. And so what happens is, is it's all oh, He's just that hometown guy. And so we don't always see Him for who He is. He is the one. He is the one that has been sent that Isaiah tells about. 
He is the one that comes that we celebrate during Lent and Easter. He is the one that came and gave himself on the cross in order to give forgiveness to us. And it's in that forgiveness that we are freed from that bondage of sin. We are freed from the bondage of this world. And we are then freed so that we truly do have liberty to be able to celebrate and to, and to be able to live that life that God has intended for us. Each and every day that we stay in the scriptures, each and every day that we hear his word, each and every day that we allow him to be in our heart and we follow his commands, it gives us the freedom to be able to do those things without hindrance. And one day for all of us, even when that final enemy comes after us, that we will be able to laugh it in the face and that, that we will have eternity. Because death will not have its way. It will not be the final chain. And that chain has been broken. So then we will know what it means to live a life in Jesus. And so that's what I would do. What we take from this is to realize, to realize that in this world we are in bondage. But yet it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through His death and resurrection it is the Easter story that we live out through our lives that has freed us to give Him worship and praise. And that, that is where our priority is at. That is what we need to celebrate. And that is what being children of God is all about. So live that life. Live that life that God intends for you. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds centered and focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We take our tithes and our